the play is about um two um women um one is rose who is a fictional character who is a modern day um film student she's studying a phd in film theory and then there is a real life character who made her first film in 1896 who is alice e Blaché, the first woman filmmaker she had the opportunity to express herself as an artist because of the time and all its myriad of idiosyncrasies was able to create art easily until she wasn't. It's about a woman who had a voice, was able to tell her story and then was silenced. And at the same time, it's about a modern woman who goes on the opposite journey, who today has found that she has no voice or no way of expressing herself, but through the course of the play, manages to find her voice, her identity, her way of expressing herself through the art that she makes. She's inspired by certain moments in, in Alice's life and intrigued by the way that she um, operated 120 years ago. And so we're looking at what's changed uh, for women, specifically in the industry of film over the last 120 years. The fact that there are so many women in film history that have been forgotten, um, there's been a, since I started coming up with the idea for the play, there's been a slight resurgence in Alice Guy-Bosche's um, reputation but it's still she's still not well known as other male um, filmmakers who are working in the same period and sometimes they weren't making breaking the same ground as Alice was there was so many more women making films in the position of directors and producers um, and basically the positions of power and decision making um, before the 1930s than there are now so it's it's not a steady graph that you would expect it to be like the women have um had a, like a steady incline of increasingly more representation in those roles instead there's kind of there's a graph that kind of goes up and then abruptly goes down so i've done a, a lot of research into um women in film throughout history um, and some of the things that interest me are to do with the Hayes Code, um, censorship, how that affects us now, even though we don't formally have a censorship system, there's still censorship in place. I think it's really interesting to, to look at things post Me Too and how, again, it's been a rise and fall so that the, the number of, of women directing films rose slightly in the wake of all that because because of the, the media interest and then it's immediately fallen again. Well we've been experimenting with text, um, Sarah's brilliant text. Um, we've we've done loads of improvisation around the themes of the play. Um, we've been using projection as a way to help us tell the story. Um, live video as as well as um, some of those films that are still exist, Alice's films that still exist out there to help us get into that part of her story as well. It's sort of like we know certain versions of history and how we've got here, uh, but there's some gaps and and I think what this play serves to do is fill in some of the gaps, some of those stories that we've, uh, we know and we've been telling each other, maybe as women, but they've not been shouted about. The play is about forgotten voices, the forgotten voices of women and women's stories, and so it feels really significant to be able to tell that story through these two brilliant women. Listen to me! Listen to me! Listen to me! Listen to me. Listen to me.